The path of initiation is exciting. And when we choose to follow it, walk in it, engage in it with joy, something new comes in from a dimension that is beyond our comprehension that allows it to be experienced with divine flair, elan, surprises, very interesting opportunities within the initiations in terms of meeting people, extending our hearts to others, learning to radiate light in virtually every possible situation, to be compassionate, choosing to be loving, forgiving, understanding. And as that joy finds concourse within us, as levity lives inside of us, as a preeminent virtue. Life just is more beautiful, more serene. We kind of rub off all the calluses of our callous nature through forgiving extensions of our hearts. And we become brighter, more luminous, sun-like, sunflower-like. And everything just shines with a brilliance and a beingness that is like the eternal smile of God manifest through the sun, through the stars, through the sky, through the rainbows. This rainbow light of our Christed selfhood our crystalline nature dawns in a more wondrous and magical and even miraculous way. Joy shakes us a little bit here and there, even as the path of initiation shakes us up somewhat. Yet in the shaking, there's also the divine baking of our reality and a mystical and divine way that is childlike at times and affords us entree into heaven's ways. I can't imagine that there would be any morose attitudes in heaven. Can you? Everybody has to have a positive mental, positive emotional attitude to live in heaven. You just can't live in the dross of your lesser self. You have to rise up and live in the perfectionment and the joy field of your sun or solar presence. So if we take our cue from heaven that life can be fun, we can be easygoing, we can give people the benefit of the faith as I like to say, we can always look at things from an optimistic vantage point rather than looking at things as a pessimist. We can true ourselves every day and even hourly to live in the vital energies of spirit that are truly recreating us every moment as a new creature in Christ, as a divine being continuing to flower and expand and grow and evolve. Our nature is godlike. Remember that. My nature is godlike. You can say that to yourself in the morning. My nature is godlike. I am meant to be godlike. Now, you're not meant to be the totality of God because God and God's infinity or infinitude is beyond our human comprehension and level of understanding. Yet, 
you can have the qualities of God even while living upon earth. And these qualities, which are virtues, ring through you, sing through you, spin around and within you to co-create something that is unique within your divine individuality. And everybody should love you for who you are because you are God in manifestation in some unique, glorious way. God is great in God's creation and in every aspect of that creation, every facet of it, which includes every being, both human, angelic, and divine, animal, mineral, plant, everything is God. When we choose to elicit joy from heaven and going through our divine experience upon earth, we raise the earth in sacred fire. Raising the earth in light and joy and love is really our cause. When you consider why you are here, and I hope you consider it regularly, you can always come back to the fact that you were created in the image and likeness of God. Why? To expand God's awareness where you live, move, and have your being. To co-create with God. To be a true son or daughter of God, which means to follow in God's footsteps and God's ways. And to actually merge with the light so that in eternality you can experience the allness of God within your being and within all beings which are one. If you find your purpose in life, which to me is to love and to give, to serve and to shine, loving, giving, serving and shining, I feel is my purpose maybe with a little bit of sharing and teaching in there too, then I think you'll find that all the lesser manifestations that could affect you and impact you to bring you down or to depress you just seem to start to disappear because you are above them in consciousness. Your vibration is above them in frequency. They can no longer impact you you have risen to your Christ level of vibration and experience or your Buddha nature, your mother nature, and the little things, the imps, the problems, the mischaracterizations don't impact you as maybe they used to or you allowed them to in the past. You have entered causality rather than reactivity. In causality, you are the emitter, the emanator, the bright shining light of your own star presence. You're not just refracting light like the moon. You are emanating light like the sun. So you are above the morose, the decadent, the imperfect, and the ignoble. You have chosen reality. You have chosen the light. You have inoculated yourself against that which could drag you down. The evils of this world, the unrealities of life lived by the dark ones. There is no more any darkness in you. You have become all light. That is your goal, your high ideal, to be all light. And by being all light, you have to pass every test because you can't do otherwise. You are always in the light. You choose what the light tells you to do through its superlative intelligence. And the light will communicate with you Every moment, if you live in that light, you choose the light. 
So as we choose joy, levity, a fun, loving spirit, and we are brave and courageous to maintain that state of illumined well-being, we can also live happily ever after within our presence. One with our beloved, one with the great beloved, one with all beloveds, 